Hey, what's going on? It's Quinn David Furness. We're coming to you live from 817 St. Paul Street. This is my show, Quinn David Furness. <clears throat> Can't even say my own name. Quinn David Furness presents the Beantown Podcast for Saturday, May 18th, 2019. Doing a Saturday recording for the first time in a while. We've been on a Sunday schedule for um, what feels like more than a month at this point it's just kind of how my life has been working out but um we're coming to you on a saturday because i've been sitting here not sitting but i've been in my apartment most of the day packing which is always i hate moving it's just i didn't have to do it last summer but besides summer 2018 I moved summer 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, and now 2019. So the hope would be this new place I got in Chicago, which got a lot of space. It's a solid location. Hoping to put a couple of years into this one at minimum, you know, three. But we'll kind of, we'll, we'll see how it's going after after a year or so. This is my podcast. We are known as the People's Podcast. Don't forget to use the hashtag Friends of the Podcast when you're talking about Beantown Podcast on social media. Beantown Podcast is one of Baltimore City's top 500 podcasts. I know when we move in, uh, what, two weeks here, it's going to be a big cultural loss for the city of Baltimore, I think, in the last two years. Bean Town has become associated with Baltimore. A lot of people in olden days would would refer to uh, Boston, Massachusetts, as Bean Town. But really, with this, I don't I don't want to go so far as to call it a cultural revolution. But really, with this cultural revolution that Bean Town and its seven listeners have instilled, um, it it's been huge. It's it's been a good time. So uh, we will miss Baltimore. Um, Baltimore will will miss us. We're we're gonna we're going from big fish in a little pond to big fish in a big pond. Let's just put it that way. Um, Quinn and his seven subscribers are going to be coming in hot to the north side of Chicago in about two weeks. Here, um, listener discretion is advised when you're listening to the Bean Town Podcast. Number one, we will occasionally use some foul language. Number two, podcast is objectively terrible. You would think perhaps that after about 17 months of making a show weekly that, you know, oftentimes oftentimes when you're you're looking at like writers or musicians or artists, you can kind of see how they've grown since they've gotten their start. Not really the case with the Bean Town podcast, consistently average, which is kind of how I've been going through life. So, you know what? I I I can fall asleep at night. So that's really that's really what we're going for here. Um it is May 18th, 2019. We are right in the middle of spring. We've actually been fortunate so far here in Baltimore. We really haven't had the days where it's gotten to that like unbearably hot slash humid point. Um Right now, you know, the days are topping off around 80, and the humidity is fairly high, but it's not egregious. It's around like 70%, um, which to you might sound like a lot. To us out here in the Mid-Atlantic, it's really not so bad. So it, it's been it's been quite tolerable. Uh, I've got a little fan going um, in my kitchen, and they say so. There, there's a there's a trick. They say fill a bowl with ice water and place it directly in front of the fan so that. You're really doing like a DIY um, AC unit because it's blowing out cold air. So I fill up. I've had this plastic, uh, imagine like a salad bowl um, from Target for, I don't know, probably three years or so, four years maybe. Probably got it when I was finishing college, going to grad school, that sort of thing. And so I've never had any issues with this plastic bowl. I fill it up with water, ice, set in front of my fan, on my kitchen table, in my kitchen. I walk away, doing other stuff, yada, yada, yada. I walk into the kitchen. An hour later, 
Oh, man, it's like high tide in my kitchen. There is water all over the floor, and I'm thinking, what's going on? Apparently, there is some sort of leak in the bowl. I don't know. I inspected it, couldn't find anything. I filled it with water again and looked underneath it as I was holding it up, couldn't find anything, so it must just be a little trickle. But, boy, it moved fast because I'm guessing the the people – who live in unit 206 here are getting like a an infinity shower from above you know those you go to the fancy hotels and they just it's like a rainforest the 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 flow of water just comes directly over your head super fancy something I'll never be able to afford but um yeah so we had to do a little bit of clean up there which was fun as we're simultaneously trying to move but uh yeah a lot of boxes in my apartment right now uh I'm not a Although I've you know moved like what whatever six times in the last seven years, I'm not a packing expert. Doing my best, you know, wrapping the important pieces, the glassware, the pie pan, and clothes and stuff. And I think it's going to be fine. We we made this drive two years ago, and nothing broke. So we're gonna we're gonna do it in reverse now. Um, Got a lot of boxes. Really don't I well, I was gonna was about to say I really don't have much more than when I came out here. That's not entirely true. I have a coffee table from IKEA. I think it's uh is the name. And I have a queen mattress. I didn't take or I didn't have the queen when I when I came out here. And I have a bed frame. Otherwise I think those are the most significant pieces. I have a coat rack and a shoe rack. And a vacuum cleaner and a microwave. Um, so some extra pieces, nothing, nothing huge though. Uh, but it's been a lot, um, you know, building these boxes and then trying to strategically pack stuff in there and all the books, which make everything way too heavy. So, but it's happening. We got, uh, we're here until until next Saturday, and then we're gone for about eight days, and then we're here for two days, and then that's it so the uh the countdown has begun per se um here in in bean town it's been a, it's been a good run a lot of people ask me um you know what i'll miss about baltimore um i've i've met some people here that that i'll definitely miss but honestly in the last 2 years it hasn't been like a like i don't I don't feel like I really have an established friend group out here. People have come and gone um, for a variety of reasons. And dating out here has been eh, not great. It's given me some good stories. Oh, Parking Girl, a classic Beantown podcast story. One of the, one of the legends. Um, matched with her on a, on a new app. Like last week probably. Maybe like five days ago. And she messaged me. And was like, LOL, and I was like, LOL back, you know how these kids talk these days. And I was like, hey, let's meet up, I'm going to move soon. And she was like, I'm down. So I was like, alright, what are you doing next weekend, aka this weekend? And then she never responded. So, parking girl, you're killing, you got to give us a better ending than this, you know, you... I, one way or another, but don't just leave a, you know, don't just, I was going to say leave me. This is really, the whole podcast is really hinging on this. So we're actually going to, and no pun intended because it wasn't hinge, but we're going to, we're going to pull this back up and get the attention of parking girl again. So we send another message. We'll see what happens. I know the, the four of you who are listening are anxiously awaiting the outcome so i will keep you posted whenever i learn things but packing up moving out i'm moving out you know billy joel's playing at camden yards this summer and when they announced it probably i don't know four or five months ago i was all over it um on like the pre-sale thing, whatever. And I was like, mm, I'm, I'm going to get a ticket, you know, it'll be fun. And then I <clears throat> got to the, the website and I saw the prices and <laughs> a lot of Billy Joel fans in Baltimore, apparently. 
because I could not afford those tickets. Which is a sh- it's a shame because I'm I'm sure Billy Joel puts on a really good concert, but do I want to shell out you know like 150 plus just to like have a nosebleed seat to hear some live music? I mean, maybe. And it's Billy Joel, but like mm, that's just so much, right? I can do so much with 100 and whatever it was. It's like 160, 170 for the like cheapest one. So I don't know. We'll see if I ever get to see Billy Joel in my lifetime. Uh, we've got some things to talk about on the podcast. As always, if you have any topics, comments, concerns, or grievances that you would like addressed live on air, and I should mention we're coming to you live, you can always email us, beantownpodcast at yahoo.com, or you can leave us a uh, comment on beantownpodcast.com. But again, that's beantownpodcast at yahoo.com, beantown, B-E-A-N, podcast at yahoo.com. Dot com. Tweet at us. We are at BeantownCast, and we love hearing from you. You can follow me on Instagram. I am Q dot Queen D, Q period Queen D. And this is interesting, and I, I don't often mention this because it's really not that interesting, but when I first started my Instagram account maybe, oh, I don't know, two years ago, it's been a pretty recent thing for me, I my original Instagram uh, username was Q underscore Queen D. And shortly after, maybe three or four months after I launched my Instagram account, I don't know if Instagram, or what they did, but they changed my Instagram handle. I don't think about this that often, but it's true. It's now Q, <coughs> Q dot Queen D. It was Q underscore Queen D. So, you know what? Instagram, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what your policy was, but no one ever told me. It just woke up one day, and, and I had been telling people it's Q underscore Queen D, and I look in my account, and now it's Q dot Queen D. So who knows? Who knows? Uh, it is the Preakness Stakes from Pimlico today. Always an interesting thing. Before I moved to Baltimore, I always assumed that Preakness was like – because you, you know, and I've been to Louisville before, but you see how crazy people go for the Derby. And, um, you know, I, I would have friends like in college that would drive down there for the weekend and they just get totally trashed and all that stuff. So I assumed it was a similar culture surrounding Preakness weekend. And I've only been here for two years, so I don't think I have perfect judgment of it but it is it's not um people really there there's a certain type of crowd of like people white people in their 20s who drink a lot of natty light who like turn out for it and get really uh apologies for language shit-faced on the infield and that sort of thing but it's not like this city-wide thing like if you were just a casual person living in Baltimore and you didn't really care about horse racing or know anything about horse racing, you would have no idea that Pimlico is is in Baltimore. And it's about three miles from from where I live right now. And uh, no one talks about it. No one seems to care. You see a little bit of advertising online and some bars will like host events but not many. You know, it's not like you go to Louisville, I imagine, for the Derby and the whole city is just like, oh, my God, it's Derby weekend. You come out to Baltimore for Preakness and it's like, oh, I forgot that that was a race. So it's really fascinating. I don't know. That's when people ask me what I'll miss about or like if I have a bucket list, a Baltimore bucket list. Um, well, the first answer is no, but um, I would have loved to go to Preakness. But it's a type of thing. It's kind of like going to Vegas by yourself. You know, it's interesting, but is it really worth it? Eh. Going to Preakness by yourself, you know, if you the cheap tickets get you the infield, I think it went for like 50 bucks. If you want to go to the grandstand to actually like sit and watch the race which is what i'd be more interested in that's like over a hundred bucks um and it's a type of thing where if you're with a group of friends and you're all like looking to get hammered and have a good time then i could i could see the joy in that i could definitely see the value but um 
I don't really have any friends I know who are like into that sort of thing. And I also, none of my friends here have ever even mentioned Preakness. Not that I am a huge equestrian person, but you know, the big three, Derby, Preakness, and uh, Belmont Stakes. I mean, come on, like you got to care. It's only three big races a year. It's a triple crown. So, anyways, I don't have any money on uh, on Preakness today. Uh, I have no, like, tips or confidence or leads on anything. I think the race is really wide open. I'm just hoping it's exciting. Honestly, I feel like a lot of the races lately in the Triple Crown have just not been that interesting. And I mean, this year's Derby was interesting because of what happened after but in terms of the actual race it was just kind of like a eh, maximum security out front stays out front finishes out front so um we're gonna we've had some longer podcasts lately some good ones too i've been proud of where we've been lately. this one is is kind of a stepping stone to other big things but what we're gonna do is read some advertisements and then um mentioned this on Facebook earlier. This is our big ideas podcast. So I had some really uh I'll say really good for like the three likes I got will prove that. Um quick quick sidebar and I also talked about this on social media the other day. S- something happened like two years ago with Facebook's algorithm. I can't speak for Twitter as much because I've never had as much of a presence on Twitter but it's now it's now extending to my Instagram as well. Back in the old days, and I'm talking like 2000, I don't know, like 2011, 2012. And you post something on Facebook, and I'm sure this is true for some people. I'm sure it's not true for others. But average, whatever, status photo doesn't really matter. You you would rack up the likes. I have like right now. I think I have like 600 Facebook friends. Um, and I pretty much know all of them. That you know, it's, that list has grown a little bit, but it's always I've consistently been around four hundred, five hundred. Back in the day, quote unquote, you could get some serious likeage, even if you know it wasn't like an amazing post. Whether it's a text status, a photo, a video, it doesn't matter. You would still do pretty well because people were seeing your content. Um, Fast forward to 2019, certainly the algorithm has effed a lot of us over. Um, I also recognize that people just don't use Facebook the way they used to. But but occasionally you'll, you'll scroll through and you see the people who like Facebook has decided to invest in, and they're getting like the regular amount of of likes. And I know what you're saying, Quinn, your stuff sucks. It's just because you've gotten worse. Yes, that's true, but also not at this rate. You know, not not this extreme. Same goes for Instagram. And this has happened to me quite recently. Um, literally like in the last month, two months, where I used to post something on Instagram and it would be fine, whatever. My my posts tend to have similar levels of quality. And I could expect between 15 and 20 likes. That was just kind of standard. Um, I have like 270 followers or something. So it's it's a pretty like standard uh, percentage conversion rate, whatever. Lately, I've been posting and we're lucky to hit 10. I mean, you really got to grind it out to get to 10. So I know Instagram is owned by Facebook. So I'm guessing they're doing similar shady business, but... It, what it's what it is helping me do is place less personal value in social media, but it's also a little disheartening because you want to continue to utilize those platforms to communicate with people you care about uh, and people who otherwise you wouldn't be able to have any sort of connection with just due to you know physical distance. So. I don't know. Social media putting us in a tough spot. Um, but what I was saying was that 
yesterday I had some real big ideas on on social media and it sparked this idea for today's podcast where we're just going to be going through some big ideas that I've had. Some of them are really big, some of them are little, but they're all big ideas. So let's read some ads first and then we'll jump into those big ideas and then we'll we'll finish up. I'm going to take a nap because I'm a little, well, I should really pack a little bit more. It's already 3 p.m. I don't know. I'm in that weird, I'm getting to that weird spot where um, I, I've packed a decent amount of stuff already and now we're getting down to it where it's like I still have to function in this apartment for like a total of six more days. So you don't want to pack up anything you actually need, but do you ever actually use as much as you think you do? No, but then you what you don't want to do is tape something up and then you're like, damn, I really wish I had that. So we're kind of getting to that point currently. Next step is shoes and jackets. I got a lot of that stuff that I definitely won't be using. So uh, let's let's read some ads here. Uh, Home Pride, Oregon. Are you tired of selling your house for less than a quarter of what it's worth, all because you couldn't find a reliable home inspector in time? Well, Oregon listeners, there's good news. Home Pride Inspection Services in Bend, Oregon, is Central Oregon's hottest new home inspection provider. With inspection services including things like heating and cooling, roofing, plumbing, and so much more. Home Pride Oregon is both contractor certified and home inspection certified, so you know you're getting the good stuff. If you're tired of big real estate stranglehold on the home inspection market and you want a safe certified home inspector that you can trust, call Steve at 541-207-1101 or visit homeprideoregon.com. That's 541-207-1101 or visit homeprideoregon.com. Home Pride Oregon. Inspection perfection. Shout out to the Samson Q2U series. Providing us weekly, week in and week out with that crisp, clean audio quality. You can really feel the highs and the lows of podcasts. And God knows there's a lot of lows. Um, I do want to say I reached out. This is this is interesting. This is new information. People are always talking about sponsors, Jack Links, Samson Q2U, whatever. Well, you know, we, we've been unofficially sponsoring Samson Q2U for uh, over a year now. And I'm thinking, why am I doing all the legwork? You know, they should be throwing a little dough in for me. So I reached out to Samson and uh, let him know, you know, my podcast, what I'm doing here, some of my stats. And... It's one thing, you know, if, if they're they're not in the business of that, they don't want to be associated with one of Baltimore's top 500 podcasts for whatever reason. But I sent them an email about this time last week and nothing. They don't even, you know, it's like, what if I was Brad Pitt? You know, they would never even, they wouldn't even get back to Brad Pitt. So I don't know, Samson. You make quality products, but you might need to work on your customer service a little bit. Uh, TV Guide it's been like feels like years since I got a new TV guide. Here's how long it's been. When we got our last TV guide, it had Peter Dinklage on the cover and they were getting everyone hyped for the Game of Thrones season premiere. Tomorrow is the C- the series finale of Game of Thrones. Let that let that sink in. That's how long it's been since we received the new TV guide. I don't know what's on TV. I also don't have a TV, but not the point here. I feel very underinformed. I was at a hotel in Virginia Beach um, just uh, two nights ago, Thursday night. Got to my hotel, turned on the TV, thinking, okay, let's let's turn on some some stuff. Let's, let's watch. And then I'm thinking to myself, oh, wait, I haven't gotten a TV guide in two months. I have not the slightest idea what what's on. And that's a that's a problem. That's problematic TV guide. And it's just really unprofessional. So the worst part is well I did I did do the USPS forwarding thing. We'll see how accurate it is. I really don't want to miss when John Goodman graces the cover wearing his red flannel, kind of bending over. Elbows on knees, smiling at the camera. The headline is, he's back. 
Because the Connors coming back at some point, I hope. Now that uh, now hey now that uh, Johnny Galecki Big Bang Theory is done, is that right? Had its series finale. Um, maybe that'll free him up to film for the Connors. We'll see, or tape for the Connors. How does that work? Film refer to a movie, and and, and tape refer to TV. We would need to get. Uh, I am you know I am the best boy of the Bean Town Podcast, but we would need to get someone else. Um, going here uh speaking of 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 podcasts though we recorded uh with with a good friend of the podcast matthew fiedler um who's looking to start up his own podcast sort of a a rival podcast if you will um recorded an episode and that might be ready soon who knows maybe it won't maybe you know we we tried to do it another time and the audio didn't work out so Hoping for better things this time around. Uh, um, I mentioned I was in Virginia Beach, though, which was a good time. I had never been to, like, the Norfolk, um, uh, <clears throat> Chesapeake, Newport News, Virginia Beach, Williamsburg area. That's an interesting area, though, because it's on a map geographically, it's not very big. I mean, from Williamsburg, you basically you have Williamsburg, then Newport News, then Norfolk, then uh, Chesapeake, then Virginia Beach, and the whole thing is just like a oh I don't know thirty mile stretch or so, but there's five plus distinct towns, and I believe Virginia Beach technically is the most populated city in Virginia, although don't quote me on that. So I uh, did some work down there, drove down on Thursday morning, which wasn't too bad, pretty easy. Although I'm driving on I-64, Easter Richmond, right around Williamsburg, and there I was like three cars behind these trucks that pull onto the highway, two like pickup trucks. I should also mention Enterprise gave me a pickup truck for rental which is the second time they've done this to me in the last year which is just like fine but the thing's huge the turn radius is so bad mpg's like seven and it's just like i'm not that picky i don't complain about much especially regarding things like cars hotels etc like whatever but come on a, in a, a, a pickup truck for my rental eh not ideal so these two uh it's a you know four it's the interstate so two lanes going each way but these two pickup trucks pull out in front and all of a sudden they're starting to slow way down and so like okay what's going on this is interesting the car directly behind the the two pickup trucks like moved out onto the shoulder to try to do a pass and the pickup truck did like a tokyo drift fast and the furious move to cut him off it was crazy. So no one had any idea what the hell was going on. Well, we come up on a construction site, and the way this interstate is, you know, a strip of strip of, of land in between um, each set of lanes, and there are a bunch of trees on that strip of land. Well, they're 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 felling the trees, if you will, you know, timber, et cetera, et cetera. But they're 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 the when they cut the trees down they're they're forcing them to fall right on the interstate and we're, this is this isn't like you know a state highway or a county highway this is like an interstate like major road people got to get places why wouldn't they just cut them down and have them fall on the strip of land like that's i mean i'm sure there's an explanation for it but so we literally come to a complete stop, probably, I don't know, 300 feet from where they chopped this tree down. But they got, like, two guys out there. You know, it's this huge construction site. You would assume they have this whole big crew of people out there to clean up this tree that they just threw onto the inter- or threw across the interstate because that's, like, a major thing, right? Um they have like two guys out there with chainsaws and the tree falls and they start chopping it, you know, 
that sort of thing. And we sat there for 20 minutes, just put the car in park. People were out of their cars walking around. I think one guy was grilling in the back of his truck. It was just, it was ridiculous. Thankfully, it, it didn't make me late for my thing because I had given myself time. But, it was just, you know, casual Thursday at like 2 p.m. in the afternoon, just chopping trees down. You know, these were big trees, too. These weren't little, like, pine trees. These trees were probably, I don't know, I would guess like 100 feet high, if not more. Um, they, yeah, they were big. It was baby. It was, it was remember in Avatar when they uh, when they shoot like the mother tree and it's coming down and stuff and all those blue people are running scared. I can't be the only one who's rooting for the humans in Avatar. They'll be back. Stephen uh, Lang is that his name? They're bringing them back and they killed them off in in Avatar the original movie. But he's he's in the cast for Avatar too. So he was my favorite character. Uh, let's finish the ads here. Um, oh, was there anything else I want to say about Virginia Beach? No, it was fine. Walked the boardwalk. In general, it wasn't quite as impressive. I don't want to say impressive, but the, the boardwalk itself wasn't really uh, bustling or thriving. And I'm not talking about foot traffic. I'm just talking about like actual things on the boardwalk in terms of like food, drink, shops, etc. There really wasn't. There was, you know, there was stuff, but not, I don't know, I've done Rehoboth Beach, Ocean City. It's just, uh, there's a little bit more of a quiet feel. I'm sure it gets crazy the deeper you get into the summer, but um, it was, there wasn't quite as much, which is fine. I'm mean, less crowded. Great. Uh, it was just interesting. I'd never been to Virginia Beach before. I didn't go in the sand. I don't like the sand. Insert your Attack of the Clones quote. Um, but no, I, I n- I've never gotten the whole sand thing. It's just like little rocks that get everywhere in your shoes, in between your toes, in your hair. It's just, I don't get it. I don't, I see, it gets under your nails. I see no appeal in sand. I hate sand. I don't like sand. Um, but yeah, we had to drive back yesterday. I knew it was going to be shitty. You know? Google Maps says like four hours, 15 minutes. Next thing you know, it's hour six. You're sitting in Brooklyn, Baltimore, desperately trying to get to the north side of town. It's always interesting. You know, once you actually get into Baltimore, it really doesn't feel that bad. It's just everything south of Baltimore, between Baltimore and D.C., there are just so many people. How can there be so many people in, in this area? I don't get it. There are so many people, so many cars. Public transportation is so bad. Same problem in Atlanta. All right. Bob and Weave. We all know the hairstyle. We all love it. But how many Midtown, Baltimore-based, independent barbers can actually give it to you the way you deserve? And I'll mention I gave myself a fresh cut last night. Mm. Shaved my face, too. Although I'm keeping a little goatee action, I look good. I might have to update the website. Uh, Enter Cuts by Q. It's like Enter Sandman, but different. Cuts by Q has been independently owned and operated since 1995 and is probably one of the better barbershop operations servicing Baltimore City, Baltimore County, and Cook County, Illinois. From beehives to bangs, faux hawks to flat tops and everything in between, call Cuts by Q at 815-298-7200 or email cutsbyq at yahoo.com. That's Cuts, Q-U-T-Z, by Q at yahoo.com. Oh, when you need a fresh do, something snappy and new, just call the experts at Cuts by Q. Speaking of singing... I've been on a killer's kick for about a week now. I go through these phases where I'll just like listen to one band incessantly just like throughout the day. Until like last week it was Elton John, which you're like Elton John is nothing new there. Well, when Elton John has like 50 albums, so there's always going to be new music that you've never heard before. Not to mention all these, you know, B-sides and covers and other songs that never made it onto an album 
or like deluxe edition hits. So you're like, Quinn, you've been an Elton John fan for like 15 years. Yes. I'll still, when I get on these like Elton John binges, I'll still discover a new song or two that I'm like, damn, I never heard this song before. And it's great. So now we're on the killers. Not not quite as extensive a discography, but very good live. If you never watched a killers concert, um, they got some good ones on YouTube. So. Uh, finishing up here with our main event. We like to do that. Wait till the end. Um, big ideas podcast. So if you, if you're friends with me on Facebook, which I'm sure the two of you who are listening are, um, you probably already saw these, but there, it was kind of a three part series. So number one, game of Thrones on ice. And they're, they're always talking about those, like, uh, there's something with ice in a fire, a game of fire and ice, I think. And there's like the the White Walkers, which I think is a metaphor for KKK. Or I like to say White Walkers. I like to pronounce White. White. Um, so I think Game of Thrones on ice could really, you know, fit in easily. Or f- Game of Fire and a- Game of Fire and Ice on ice. Is that what it's called? A Game of Fire and Ice? A Tale of Fire and Ice? I don't remember if Game of Thrones is a tale. Or or what it is, but you you guys get it. Uh, next next big idea: Anderson Cooper on ice on ice. It's like a stadium tour where he discusses immigration. Maybe there be politicians come on, or um, maybe like an ACLU leader. Everyone ha- would have to know how to skate though, because you're you're skating the whole time. There's no sitting in this show. Um, cause it's very informative, but it's also entertainment. You know, people want to be entertained when we're talking about immigration reform. Um, the kind of triumvirate piece here, ice T and ice cube. So ice T is, uh, a rapper, I think an ice cube, um, is on law and order SVU. Is that right? Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, they do an icy promotional tour on ice. So, you know, ICs, those things that are like Slurpees, but different. You get them at movie theaters. Back in the day, they would have free refills. You go with Jared Sloth Hour to see a B movie. You get like three of those. Oh, man, that's going to be a good time. On ice. It's going to be cold. Bring your jackets, campers. It just made me think about all these jackets. I'm looking at my coat rack that I have to pack. It's just the the other thing is like once you build these boxes and you start filling them up, well, I only have 420 square feet in my apartment. So I physically don't have a ton of space for all these boxes. So things are getting stacked. I feel like a Chinese gymnast just trying to navigate my apartment right now. I'm squeezing in and out of spaces and... Should probably lose <clears throat> lose some weight if I'm going to navigate this apartment here. So that's Ice T and Ice Cube, IC promotional tour on ice. Uh, we talked about Preakness a little bit earlier in the show, and again, it's called the Preakness Stakes, S T A K E S. But I'm thinking Preakness Stakes, new big idea, S T E A K S, Preakness Stakes. It's the perfect post-race meal at Pimlico. So you go, you got a full day of horse racing, and then it's dinner time. Post time's at like 6.45 tonight. A late dinner, 7.15, you're thinking, mm, what is this? Horse steak. Do they actually call... Is the steak just refer to a cow or is steak just any cut of meat, right? Do you have... If if you have something from a deer, is it a venison steak or is it just venison? I don't know. There's chicken fried steak. What's the deal with that? Can chickens have steak? You don't. He, you never buy. Maybe steak is just for like four legged mammals. I don't know. Maybe we'll get. Uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, just died actually. Jim Fowler. Is that his name? Animal expert just passed away. Rest in peace. R.I.P. in peace uh, to to Jim Fowler. I think that's his name. Gone too soon. If any of you, for the one of you out there listening, knows um, anything about animals or steaks or cuts of meat or cuts by Q, um, feel free to to tweet at us. Let us know what we're doing wrong here. Um, This is something that 
I think I've mentioned on the podcast before. I'm not actually sure, but it is. It has been one of my big ideas for a while. Um, pros and cons. P R O S E and cons. It is a prison rehabilitation program where grad students from across the country, uh, from English departments, actually teach short story writing to prison inmates. It's a great way to rehabilitate. Um, it gets you learning about literature and writing and characters and story structure. And it's got one of the best names of all time, pros and cons, P-R-O-S-E and cons. Uh, another big idea. Oh, this this one came up because uh, I don't know if you heard Trump was given a speech at some sort of real estate convention the other day. And he was ragging on Amtrak, yada, yada, yada. So I'm thinking, hey, let me reach across the aisle here. And we can work together on this issue. So instead of Amtrak trains, we, pl- we replace them with dog sled trains. That's right, dog sled. We're talking Balto, Snow Dogs, Cube Gooding Jr., all that good stuff. Um, number one, you're just going to, it's going to be good for, I think, the country's morale instead of these big, you know, steel metal trains that feel very uh, impersonal. All of a sudden, you got you got dog sleds. It's great. They're, if they're cute, they're fluffy. You you bond over a common love of canines. I think there's something there. Uh, it's also a lot cheaper because dogs don't. You don't have to pay dogs, right? You have to pay to operate a a big track and electricity and all that stuff. But really, all you need for dogs are some some water and kibble. You know, dogs don't expect a salary because Dogs wouldn't know what to do with the salary. So there's uh, it probably faster. And you might think, well, Quinn, these Amtrak trains probably got like 2 million horsepower in one of those engines. And one of these dogs just has one dog power. But um, you know, with all these Amtraks breaking down and stuff, there are a lot more dogs just across the country than actual Amtrak trains. So if somebody, you know, breaks a leg, you have to shoot them, whatever, or they're getting tired or they're just being little bitches, you just replace them, you know? We got a big workforce. Um, Let's see. Anything else? Oh, you don't have to lay down the expensive track, right? Dog sleds, they'll go anywhere. Roads, mountains, rivers, if they're running fast enough. You, know, you ever see that lizard that can, like, run on water? I think if we train these dogs enough, there's potential there. Uh, these bitches go off-road, suffice to say. Uh, we got another, uh, let's see. We got four more big ideas, then we're done. Um, let's see. Oh, this one, coming back to the news recently, I've talked on the blog about plus one issues. I will say this. One of the original things that sparked the plus one conversation was uh, a a cousin I have getting married. And there's some back and forth there. Eventually, we got the plus one. So my cousin has done his due diligence. He's out of this conversation now. But there are other weddings. If a friend who's at a wedding right now wasn't given a plus one, and it's super close to where I am currently, and it's like, oh, that would have been fun to go to. Nope, no plus one given. There's a wedding that I've been invited to out in uh, Fort Collins, Colorado, which is a beautiful place. No plus one given. Well, I live three quarters of the way across the country, and Fort Collins isn't like, oh, let me hop off the plane in Denver and I'm there. It's let me hop off the plane in Denver, rent a car, two hour drive, then I'm there. You know, it's a big commitment. So to do that all by yourself without your plus one at a wedding where like, you know, some people, but not everybody, it's like to do all that is just, man, that's a lot, isn't it? I'm not being crazy here to go, go through all that without someone to travel with is, is rough. So here is my proposal, and this might be one of the more controversial things I've proposed on the Beantown Podcast, but I know you beaners out there, you love controversy. And I don't really know what, what this means when I'm about to say, but it sounded good when I wrote it. Second degree felony offense for plus one offenders. And let me tell you what a plus one offender is. If you're holding a wedding in like another state or generally a part of the country where your invitee 
is not from, so let's take this Fort Collins example, for instance, either you give them that plus one or you're doing time, baby. And it's, it's, there, we're going to have a whole force, you know, people like to rag on ice. People are like, why do we need space force? You're right. These are all things that you can debate, but what we, what we definitely need is someone to implement this, this, uh, this punishment. I'm thinking minimum sentence, uh, first, you know, giving the invitee the plus one and then like a $25 fine, right? We'll let them off easy for first time offenders. Um, but maximum sentence, perhaps death penalty. I don't know. I didn't, wasn't my idea. We workshopped it and that was, came out of the focus groups, but depends on the state, I suppose, because it's only legal in some states, but I just, Hey, this has got to stop. You got to stop inviting people halfway across the country for your wedding and not giving plus ones. And I get it. I know it's ex- ad- I know it's as expensive as hell. Well, I don't actually know that because I never planned a wedding. But I assume it's just to ask an individual to make all that travel, especially for these weddings where you're kind of like a, a tangential friend where you're you're friends with that person but from one specific thing and that's the other thing it's a friend from grad school in this specific instance although there have been multiple in the past year i'm just referring to this one instance where like i would guess i would probably know less than five people at this wedding based off of who i know has been invited who i know has not been invited um yeah it's just i can't I can't do it, you know. Flights, round trip, probably three hundred bucks. Hotel, even if we're playing it conservative, one night, one fifty. That's four fifty. Rental car, not twenty five, so that price goes up. Two days, probably another. That's probably two hundred dollars. So what are we at? Four fifty, six fifty. Uh, food, throw so in fifty bucks, seven hundred dollars. And taking a day off of work because it's on a weekday. Maybe even two days. I don't know. I'm not going to add the cost into that. But $700 plus cost of losing out on a day of work for a wedding where it's just, man, we don't all have that money lying around. So, And it might have been less of a hassle to just add the plus one and then you can defray costs and cut it down the middle and it's a write-off for certain people. So... I got to get off that topic. It makes me mad. Uh, we have three more pieces here. I'm going to move quickly because I said this is going to be a shorter podcast, and I? Hmm, minute 48 would beg to differ. I'm going to blow right through this one, but it's important. Star Wars 9, uh, titled The Rise of Skywalker. Here's my big idea. You make it actually good. That's it. You make it good, right? Because 7 was okay. 8 was a piece of crap. So here's my big idea. We actually make a good movie. I say we. I'm not involved in the film. I would love to do it. Here's how you do it. Eliminate stupid characters like Rose and Poe. Not Poe. Uh, Finn, excuse me. And it's not because he's black. It's just they gave him the perfect opportunity to die at the end of 8. And that's... Mm. I feel a little bit bad for the actress who portrayed Rose for all the stupid social media bullying and stuff. But also, like, your character sucks, man. So I feel bad, but not not that bad actually um actually bring back characters that we and storylines we care about don't just keep introducing new and new stuff and we don't really have anybody or like any storyline that's actually that compelling right complete waste of ray's storyline in uh episode eight she gets to do like a couple cool things on the island with luke but she doesn't have like this big redemption moment really i mean the the throne room thing with uh kylo ren was fine but like i don't know still not that interesting really from like an interesting or an intrigue perspective really not that interesting um make i know uh billy d's in it he's in the trailer but also bring back wedge and i know that's not going to happen because they asked uh dennis lawson to be in uh episode seven he said no so i get it but that's my dream, to have them 
duking it out. That would be great. Um, also, maybe just make it like a two-hour space battle with Wedge, uh, Chewie, and, and Lando where they're just shooting up bad guys for two hours. Who wouldn't want to watch that? A great space battle. Epic. People are always like, oh, we need more lightsabers. Give me more actual space battle stuff. That's what I really want, especially with this new technology we got. Mm, that would be good. Um, this is something that was floated around oftentimes when I was a college student but never actually happened. Barracks-style housing for poor college students. So you get – here's how it works. You get a studio apartment. There's four of you. Um, the apartment's probably like 400, 500 square feet, whatever. Uh, probably like 700, 800 bucks in that price range. But or like you know two hundred or less per person. You get two bunk beds. You throw them right in the studio apartment. You just make it very clear this isn't your place to hang out. That can be the library. That can be your lady's house. Whatever. This is a place where we rest our heads and we eat. That sort of thing. Um, if you do that, you save so much money. You could actually eat like two meals a day, like a normal person. Instead of, like, having coffee for breakfast and lunch and then maybe if you saved up, you can have some eggs to go with your rice for dinner. Um, It'd be good for camaraderie and for chemistry, right, the two Cs. Uh, I am a little surprised Ben Carson hasn't proposed this yet. Ben's really been, uh, I don't know if he's doing a good job because you never hear anything about HUD, housing and urban development. So, I don't know. I feel like... Nothing's really changed. Or maybe that's just because media coverage doesn't doesn't say anything about it. I don't know. Last big idea, and then I'm going to finish up because I'm tired. Airport jazz. I've talked about this before. Uh, just play it throughout all the major cities. You know, in the Hunger Games, they can do that thing where, like, stuff shows up in the sky. What if we just do that for all the major cities in the U.S., except instead of... Uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, rest in peace, like showing up and making announcements or cannon blasts. It's just airport jazz. We all know it. We all love it. Some cities already like play music over speakers in their downtown areas, but everyone loves airport jazz. It's arguably mankind's greatest invention. It's catchy. It makes you feel good. All you have to do is set up some speakers throughout the city, some quick installation, And you just let that airport jazz go 24-7. I don't care if it's 4th of July. I don't care if it's Christmas. I don't care if it's apocalyptic. Because that would calm you down in the the event of an apocalypse. I don't know a single person who wouldn't want to do this. Um, Except for maybe Nashville because of their stupid country music. And hey, if they they don't like it, I'm never a proponent of physical violence. And I don't want to see people get hurt, but that's we, we have A-bombs. We have the technology, and I'll just leave that there. Um, last last big idea, Free Blagojevich. Hashtag Free Blagojevich. Talk about it on social media. Get Trump's attention. This is probably going to be the hot-button issue in the 2020 election. And I've been I've been saying it for like 20 years that we should Free Blagojevich. And maybe, I, I don't know, Hashtag Blagojevich 2024 if he gets out in time. So. Just things to think about. Um, this has been my podcast. Quinn David Furnish presents the Bean Town Podcast. We talked a little bit about Preakness. We talked about big ideas. We talked about Virginia Beach. Please don't cut down trees in the middle of the interstate. It's just it's just in poor taste. No one wants that. So thanks for tuning in to my podcast for the zero of you still listening. I uh, appreciate your support. Remember, you can find our podcast on SoundCloud, YouTube, Stitcher, Player FM, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, iTunes, not CastBox yet, but we're getting there. Uh, wherever you find your podcast, BeantownPodcast.com. Don't forget to check out the Beantown blog. We update that every other week or so. Cuts by Q. We got some headshots on there. And uh, yeah, don't forget to use hashtag friends of the podcast and wish us luck as we are continuing to pack this weekend. And, you know, I bet on win, win, win two weeks ago at the Derby. I'm not betting on him or or the horse today because he royally sucked. But wouldn't that just be my luck if he wins Preakness and I didn't bet anything? <sighs> I'll be happy for the for the horse either way. 
All right. We'll come to you live next week, probably from right back here, 817 St. Paul Street. Probably be a Friday recording because uh, we're going to be traveling on Saturday. I got some wedding stuff, and I just don't have time uh, or don't want to make time for the podcast. And I don't want to have to travel with my podcasting equipment either. So we'll see you in, uh, in about a week here. Be nice to one another. And, uh, yeah, I hope everyone has a good time. Enjoy the Preakness Steaks. And maybe uh, if, you, and if, if anyone knows anything about what a steak is and if you can have steaks from horses, let us know because uh, that could be tasty. So, All right. For all of us at Beantown Podcast, BeantownPodcast.com, thanks for tuning in, and we will hit you up next week. <laughs>